The film begins with two superheroes, Miracle Guy and Techno Guy, who are checking solar panels outside the planet. While checking the panels, Miracle Guy sees a threat in the form of many alien ships that look like octopuses moving towards Earth. The alien ships attack Miracle Guy and Techno Guy, forcing them to flee. The scene then switches to the home of a former superhero named Marcus Moreno. That morning, Marcus and his daughter Missy Moreno are having breakfast together while watching the news on TV. After seeing the news, Missy reminds her father that no matter what happens, he cannot go back to being a superhero. At that time, Missy is very worried about her father because her mother recently died while doing her job as a superhero. This makes her afraid that Marcus might face the same fate as her mother. In another place, Marcus, who has retired from being a superhero, is shown working at a company that supports superheroes called the Heroics Company. The company is also responsible for what happened to Miracle Guy. Meanwhile, Ms. Granada, the leader of the company, prepares all the superheroes to fight the incoming aliens. At that time, Marcus, who had actually retired, is finally included because there are so many aliens they need to fight. Meanwhile, Missy, who is still at school, is picked up by the Heroics to be taken to the superhero headquarters. At the headquarters, Ms. Granada has prepared a special room for all the children of superheroes to stay until their parents finish their missions. In this room, Missy sees each child showing different powers they inherited from their parents. Unlike the others, she currently doesn't have any powers. However, she is very smart and good at planning. So, the children in the room include Wheels, a very smart boy, Noodles, who is stretchy like a noodle, Ojo, who can see events happening a few minutes into the future, and a Capella, who has a powerful voice. There's also Slowamo, who moves very slowly, Facemaker, who can change his face to look like someone else, and Twins Rewind, who can turn back time, and fast forward, who can speed up time. Besides that, there is Wildcard, whose powers are not yet perfect but he claims to be the leader, and Guppy, a little girl with water powers. Soon after, they turn on the television to watch their parents fighting the aliens. One by one, the superheroes appear and show their powers. At that time, Missy feels very disappointed when she sees her father among the superheroes because he broke the promise he made to her. The many octopus-shaped aliens manage to defeat all the superheroes. Besides being outnumbered, the superheroes can't work well together because they are too focused on themselves. This causes all the superheroes to lose and eventually get captured by the aliens. After that, the President of the United States appeared on television to deliver a message from the alien leader. The message said that the aliens would take over Earth in the next few hours. Hearing this, Missy told the other children that they couldn't just sit and do nothing. They needed to go out and save their parents and the world. Ojo had seen a vision that showed the aliens coming to capture them. At that time, Wildcard, who felt like the leader, was threatened by Missy's take-charge attitude. He made it clear that the decision to act was his to make. They then planned an escape mission from the superhero headquarters. First, they tricked three guards into coming into the room to get the key. When the guards refused to let them escape, the kids used their powers to defeat them. Just as they were about to get the key, an octopus alien appeared. Luckily, Rewind was able to turn back time a few seconds, allowing them to escape from the alien and the guards. As they were running away, Ms. Granada saw them and ordered the guards to close all the doors to trap them. Then, Wildcard noticed a hole above them and instructed a capella to create a ladder using the guards. After escaping, they got into a heroics transport vehicle to flee. Since the guards tried to stop them, a capella was asked to keep singing to make the transport fly. When they had flown far enough, a capella ran out of breath, causing them to crash into an old woman's gazebo. Unexpectedly, the old woman turned out to be Anita Moreno, Missy's grandmother, who was also a trainer for superheroes. After hearing what happened, Anita invited them inside to hide in her house. She told them that to save their parents, they had to work together using their unique strengths. Anita then took them to the backyard to train and made Missy the leader. Soon after, Missy and her friends started training hard to become strong superheroes and save their parents from the aliens. Learning from their parents' mistakes, Missy coordinated her friends to stay focused and work together. After training, Ms. Granada's troops found them. There, Anita told the children to escape through a secret tunnel, but she was captured by the aliens in the process. In the tunnel, Missy borrowed Ojo's tablet to see the future. 
She saw something shocking but decided to hide it from the others, telling only Wildcard. As they continued, they found an empty alien ship. They stole the ship to get to the alien base. When everyone boarded, they noticed Sloa Mo lagging behind. Noodles quickly grabbed him, and they headed to the alien base. At the alien base, Missy and her friends sneaked around looking for their parents. An alien suddenly appeared and chased them, but they managed to escape. They entered the control center of the alien headquarters, where they saw a mysterious pyramid in the middle of the room. Not long after, the president was seen heading towards the pyramid with some people. The kids were confused about why the president was at the alien base. Meanwhile, when Missy and the others were about to leave, they were confronted by Ms. Granada, who was there to catch them. They were confused again because Ms. Granada could enter the alien base. Their confusion was soon answered. On Ojo's tablet, a picture revealed that Ms. Granada was actually an alien. Knowing this, Ms. Granada, the president, and his men showed their true identities and immediately captured all the children, locking them in a room. In the superhero's room, they were surprised by the arrival of a figure they thought was an alien. However, it turned out to be Anita. Back in the children's room, Missy suddenly had an idea. She made her friends cry so they could collect their tears, allowing Guppy to use her powers to make a key from the tears. With this clever plan, they managed to escape from the detention room. At the same time, the superheroes watched their children's actions on a monitor. After escaping, Missy and Wild Card argued again about who should lead the group. As a result, they split into two groups. Wild Card took Facemaker, while Missy went with the rest. Soon after, Missy and her friends continued their journey to find their parents. Suddenly, they were confronted by alien henchmen. Here, the little superheroes showed their teamwork and unique strengths. Because of their good cooperation, they managed to defeat all the alien henchmen. Meanwhile, in another part of the base, Ms. Granada found Wild Card alone and took him to a room to be questioned. At the same time, Missy and her friends arrived at the control room to stop the aliens from taking over Earth. But the pyramid in the room was suddenly covered by a barrier, making it impossible to touch. While everyone was confused, Ojo suddenly spoke up. There, she revealed that she was actually the real alien leader. She suspected they wouldn't be able to stop the aliens because they couldn't work together well. This was proven by the absence of Wildcard and Facemaker. However, Missy quickly dismissed this. Missy had figured out Ojo's identity when she accidentally saw Ojo's tablet and had told Wildcard about it. Secretly, Missy and Wildcard made a plan without telling the other children, including Ojo. As part of the plan, Wildcard brought Facemaker along. The person captured by Ms. Granada was actually Facemaker, disguised as Wildcard, while the real Wildcard was in the control room. In the control room, Wildcard was instructed to deactivate the pyramid's protective barrier. To prevent the kids from winning, Ojo quickly summoned a bunch of monsters. Meanwhile, in another room, the parents were watching and worrying about their children. At the same time, Ms. Granada and her men came to capture Wildcard. However, this time Wildcard was different because he could finally control his powers completely. He now had various kinds of powers. On the other hand, Missy and her friends managed to defeat all the monsters sent by Ojo. They were able to do this thanks to their teamwork and the training they had with Anita. However, Ojo didn't give up and released one last monster to capture all the children. There, Missy decided to fight the last monster herself. She walked up high and lured the monster to follow her. When she and the monster fell, Noodles quickly grabbed Missy and saved her. Now, they just needed to insert a device into the pyramid to stop the alien's mission. But Ojo tried to stop them again by dropping the device. Slowemo had to jump to get it, and Wild Card used his teleportation powers to bring Slowemo back to the top. After a long struggle, they finally succeeded in inserting the device into the pyramid stopping the alien's mission to take over the world. After that, all the superheroes came out of the pyramid, followed by the president and Ms. Granada, who approached Ojo. There, Ms. Granada and Ojo then explained what really happened. It turns out they are actually aliens who disguise themselves as humans to test the abilities of the little superheroes. On their planet, children are the leaders. Ojo, as the leader of the aliens, hopes that the little superheroes learned a lot from this trial so they can become real superheroes in the future. The scene ends by showing the little superheroes finally reuniting with their parents. Now, 
they have formed a group that will always protect the world. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is always listen to your grandma because she might secretly be a superhero trainer. And remember, even aliens know kids make the best leaders.